Welcome to South Florida Saltwater Fishing. I'm Heath, and it's time to get into the bite. Dolphin in the boat! Oh my god! Woo! Dolphin in the solo kingfish trip right there. That's mutton snapper right there, baby. going out and catching live bait and trying to get into the whole live bait game action, but you just didn't know where to start or how to begin or what tactic you would like to use? Well, in this episode, I'm gonna go over one of the most highly popular used tactics to catch and preserve live bait. We're gonna go over how to use the sabiki rig. Before we get into this though, if you wanna learn more about fishing, grow as an angler, or just see some great and exciting offshore fishing adventures, you can start by hitting the subscribe button. And don't forget to turn on the notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. So to start off, the sabiki rig, as I said, is one of the most highly popular tactics used to catch and preserve live bait. Another great method to catch live bait, but not necessarily preserve it, is a cast net. Cast nets kill live bait. They just do. Cast nets knock off scales, they take off slime, they gill your baits, and they put them through a traumatic experience of being netted. So, fish caught in cast nets tend to not last as long as fish caught on speaky rigs. It is what it is. But you can catch a lot more using a cast net than you can with a sabiki rig at one time. Along with catching fish on a sabiki rig, you're going to need to also have in your arsenal one of these. This is a live bait de-hooker. When you catch live bait, you don't want to touch it until it goes on your hook. Touching live bait takes off their protective layer of slime, which is what keeps them alive. Sabikis come in a couple different colors. This one happens to have little red dots. They also have ones that have little green dots right near the hook. They also have ones that alternate red and green. You have to kind of try and see what the fish are going to bite. Sometimes they only eat red, sometimes they only eat green, sometimes it, it doesn't matter. So there are many manufacturers of sabiki rigs. There is this manufacturer, which is Tsunami. There is also the manufacturer Marathon. There is Hayabusa. There is Mustad. I tend to not worry too much about the maker of the sabiki rig. What I do pay attention to is whether or not it is made with fluorocarbon line. You don't have to get the one that says fluorocarbon line. You can get the standard one made with regular monofilament. However, the ones made with fluorocarbon line increase your hookup ratio because of the invisibility factor of the line. If you have highly pressured bait fish that have been being caught a lot, you're going to want to use the fluorocarbon sabiki rig. So the setup that you can use to catch bait fish using a sabiki rig, you can use a lightweight spinner or they sell a special rod that almost looks like a pull stick called a sabiki rod. It's got one guide at the end. Uh, I personally have not been into those things ever. I tried it once. It's really stiff. There's a huge learning curve to it too. You can mess up your sabiki rig instantaneously using one of those things. So it's up to you if you want to go out and purchase a rod and reel design specifically for the purpose of using a sabiki rig. Personally, I use a lightweight spinner. This is a lightweight frigate spinning reel and this is an old lightweight Daiwa fishing rod with metal guides. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. We're only bait fishing. We're not trying to catch dolphin or tuna or kingfish. We're trying to catch small bait fish, pilchards, cigar minnows, sardines. That's what we're after with this. It doesn't have to be anything that you're going out and doing some slaying with. So to hook on the sabiki, we're gonna need a few things. You're gonna need your sabiki rig. This particular sabiki rig is a size eight. 
Sabikis come in all different sizes, fours, eights. They come bigger ones that are made for goggle eyes with feathers. This is a basic one made with fish scales. Cutting tool, you're gonna need the weight of your choice. When it comes to weight selection, I tend to use a lighter weight. I like the jigging action of the lighter weight. Sometimes the fish you're catching can swim up and get tangled up. If you find that happening a lot, you'll have to use a heavier weight. This is a two ounce bell sinker. This is a half ounce bell sinker. And the main line from your fishing reel. This happens to be four pound test. Uh, it doesn't need to be real heavy. I use four pound test because sometimes I will take my particular fishing reel and I'll fish for goggle eyes, which is an entirely different thing, but that's why I have a really light line on this. The first thing we want to do is you go on the back side and you'll peel your sabiki rig open and you'll take the packaging out. Once you have removed it from the package, you're going to notice that there are two swivels. On one side, there is a barrel swivel. On the other side, there is a snap swivel. The snap swivel is the bottom side of the rig. Do not remove the rig from this cardboard until you're ready to hook it to your rod or generally go fishing with it. We're going to tie it onto the main line of our reel with a basic clinch knot. Light line, you need to make sure your knots are still good. Now we have the rig attached to our main line of our reel. The next thing we'll do is we will open up the snap swivel and we're going to put our sinker on. There you have it. That's how you hook up a sabiki rig. Now we have our sabiki rig tied to the main line of our fishing reel. Our sinker's on. Now it's time to remove this from the packaging. Now there is a technique to do it so that you don't get tangled. What you want to do is you want to remove the rod side with your line first. And you just gently pull out each little loop and unhook the hooks from it. It'll come out real easy. You don't want to, if it's your first time doing this, you don't want to do it real fast because it'll get into a big tangle. Then you just keep slowly removing the rigs and they just come off in order like this and your rig is about four to five feet long so make sure that you know you're in you got enough space to do it as you are unpackaging it that way you don't end up with a big tangle so you just keep pulling and removing the hooks pull and remove the hooks pull and remove the hook and the more you do this, and then you get to your sinker, and then you'll pull out the last one, and you pull out your sinker, and there you have it. Nice, untangled sabiki rig. Like I said, if it gets tangled, it's not too much work to untangle it, but you don't want to end up having to do it on your first try. It can be frustrating. The more you remove these from the packages, the better you will get at it. But there's the sabiki rig fluorocarbon, ready to go, drop it in the water. To store the rig, you'll just want to wind up on your handle and hook the bottom hook either onto your handle or onto your fish hook storage device that is typically on a rod if you have not pulled it off. So now that it is hooked onto our little hook storage device, all you do is you wind up until your line is tight and you're good to go. 
put it on the boat, bring it out, find your bait, drop it in. So the first part of catching live bait and using the sabiki rig is locating your bait. Typically, you can see it. It looks like a large dark cloud in shallow water. You drive your boat up to it. If you want to, you drop a chum bag in and you get them around the boat. You'll drop your sabiki in, you'll jig it. They'll get the hookup. You'll feel them start to bounce on the tip of your rod. It'll start going crazy. If you get a bunch of them hooked up a whole stringer, pull it in. You de-hook each one of them into your live bait well, and you continue the process until you've got what you think is enough live bait to last the day. All right, now it's time to take this puppy offshore, put it to use. We are just to the north edge of the Boca Inlet. We're gonna search for some live bait, some pilchards, cigar minnows, sardines, whatever's floating around, and we're gonna use the sabiki rig to try and jig them up, put them in the live well. One key important aspect of catching live bait is you gotta have a functioning live well. Looks like we've got little sardines swimming around. Good size stringer going on. Alright, here we go. <coughs> Waiting for the school to swim by. Got a couple of them on. Maybe I can get one. Yeah, we got one guy. Oh, that's a good size sardine. Alright, not a bad start. Not exactly spectacular, but we're going to dump them in the line. So all I'll do is I let it sink down to the bottom and I lightly jig it. And it feels like I got somebody. Oh, there we go. All right, we got a couple of sardines. sure you don't tangle up Pitch the sabiki rig out, let it drop down. You want to drag your sabiki through the pile of bait, jigging it lightly. We got them. It's a rough day for the sabiki when you can only get them one at a time, but hey, I'll take it. Again, here we go. This is a cigar minnow. Use your D hooker so you don't touch your bait. Plop them in the live well. Good to go. This is the more I ideal. Whoa. You want a nice little stringer like that. And work our way from the bottom up to the top. One, two, three. That about does it for this episode. I hope you had fun. I hope you learned about how to rig up and use the Sabiki rig to catch and preserve live bait. Till next time, South Florida saltwater fishing, going wherever the cool wind takes us.